course, welcome to Conversations. Passing the torch through continued community service is the core of a legacy in Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. And you're a legacy family. And you are truly the representation of what we put into place when we sought legacy membership for the members of our sisterhood. Um, and so I'd like to start Sora sharing with you by asking a question um, about legacy. And what has that meant to you as a mother um, and seeing your daughters coming to Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority? And I happen to know what that means because I, I graduated like you did from an HBCU and my daughter came into the legacy system. But let's talk a little bit about what that means. Well, I was delighted to have them uh, be a part of Alpha Kappa Alpha. You know, it's uh, such a part of my own history and evolution. Uh, and as we gather here, this beautiful home, it, you know, it was just a hop, skip, and a jump uh, when I, you know, was initiated right. Uh, right off, I think it was 17th and New Hampshire Avenue. And I remember that moment. I remember little about life, but I remember that moment. It was a great evening and a great event. And I'm delighted that my daughters are a part of it. Nice. And you were initiated into Alpha Chapter, Alpha Kappa Alpha's first chapter here in Washington, D.C. at Howard University. And talk a little bit about the history and legacy of Alpha Chapter. Well, uh, Alpha Chapter, uh, as Alpha would suggest, was the beginning, the uh, genesis of it all. Uh, it uh, has a great many uh, significant figures uh, in our own history who were part of Alpha Kappa Alpha, and it was a, um, had a great profile on the campus of Howard University, and that's what made me excited about wanting to be a part of it. Um, and we had Marjorie Parker, you know, right. uh, uh, who was a looming figure and a great presence uh, at Howard University and throughout Washington, D.C. Uh, and we had, you know, really exciting um, um, sisters who were a part of that experience, uh, Evelyn uh, Phipps, uh, you right. know, uh, Teresa Robinson. But, you know, Evelyn, they were just such exemplary leaders. Uh, and I thought, well, this is what I want to do. If it's any way possible, this is what I want to do. Great. And Sora Amy and Sora Drew, of course, you are legacy daughters um, coming into the sorority, and your experience was different because you matriculated at predominantly white institutions. Talk a little bit, and we'll start with you first, um, Sora Amy, and then we'll have you answer next, Sora Drew. Talk a little bit about what your experiences were coming into the sorority and also um, as a proud legacy daughter. I attended Rhode Island School of Design, and because I was in a city where I was unable to become initiated at Brown University, um, we ended up having to chart our own chapter. And so four other women from uh, local schools, two from Rhode Island School of Design besides myself, and then two women from Johnson and Wales um, came together, and we went through the initiation process to charter uh, Pi Theta. So, like my sister, um, my mom has always been my single greatest role model. So the fact that she was an AKA always stood out to me as sort of a symbol of her just commitment to the community, her commitment to being a woman who embodied certain standards of excellence. And so when I went to Stanford, I was very interested walking in the door in learning more about the Xi Beta chapter. Right. Um, and then when I continued my experience there, it became increasingly important to me to kind of be part of a safer space in the larger environment where at the time there was a lot of protest about including women and um, African-American authors in the great canon um, of great works and you know there was a lot of tension really on campus around race and so when I met all of these soars at Stanford who were just amazing women doing amazing things giving back to the community it felt like the it felt like home for me right. and so it was really important to me to be a part of it and it was really life-changing I mean those women are really like sisters to me to this day. So it was a turning point in my life. Right. Sora Sharon, you have been and you continue to be a trailblazer in business and politics, having served as the first African American woman to be a mayor of a major city here in Washington, D.C. Um, and so you've been a, an inspiration to a lot of us who uh, grew up in Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority and watched with pride 
as you served with distinction and honor um, and continues even today to be involved in the occurrences of the city and indeed the nation. What was the biggest challenge you faced back then? Um, and then what are some of the challenges you see still today um, in your role now as a sitting former mayor? Being in the company of accomplished, strong, determined women is very empowering. Mm -hmm. uh, it lets you know that this is how it ought to be, right. you know, and right. uh, that helps propel you. Uh, I find that if I don't think about it, I'll do better. If I've become, you know, preoccupied with the fact that no woman, or certainly no African American woman has done this, I'll never get it done. Uh, I just normally say, okay, I'm supposed to do this, and I'm not crazy. I know that this may be, you know, a first or a hurdle, but by and large, I just don't own the impediment. I just own the outcome. What do you feel has been one of your greatest accomplishments as mayor of Washington, D.C.? Because again, when someone says Sharon Pratt Kelly, everyone knows your role in history, and more importantly, the members of Alpha Kappa Alpha, we just, as I said earlier, we just continue to beam with pride. I guess so, uh, trying to uh, excite the city into seeing herself as a 21st century cosmopolitan city. Mm -hmm. I think Washington was very much uh, consumed with a very uh, dated notion of herself. Uh, and there was an implosion of new ethnic groups, right. new cultures into the city, technology was changing, and we had the capacity to begin to present ourselves to the world as a great destination site. Uh, and so f on almost every front, I tried to push the city to embracing her future. Great, thank you. Sora Amy and Sora Drew, um, unlike your mother, you pursue different careers. Mm -hmm. um, why not politics? It was challenging growing up in the fishbowl, you know, as the daughter of elected officials, first my dad, mm -hmm. you know, for really our entire sure. childhood, and then later my mom. You know, it was an amazing, rare sort of perch from which to explore and experience the world, but it was also um, confining in some ways because you had this additional responsibility to sort of reflect the candidate in a way that was, you know, limiting or it certainly felt limiting, you know, as a child trying to explore yourself and trying to figure out exactly kind of what your place in the world was. And so for me, in the very beginning, hip hop culture felt like this really potentially impactful uh, platform to express points of view that were being missed in the mainstream conversation. And so I thought, well, if I can be a part of giving more talented young people the microphone so they can tell their stories and maybe change policy and perception that way, then I'll do that. And so that's where I started. And um, that for me actually has evolved into um, a more kind of broad definition of influencing the culture. So I'm starting a startup now, which is going to deliver hair did on demand, in-home hair care for our textures. And so it's sort of a, a transformation, a journey through different venues where I can have impact. and. In this incarnation of my journey, the idea is to empower the women who are very busy raising families, you know, running businesses, being busy professionals in the world, you know, send somebody to your house and help you get more done, you know, and also to empower the stylists to be more successful business people. So I keep trying to find other ways right. to have impact, but in the same tradition. And so my voice came out of the arts and being creative. And so I've been doing it since I was very young. Um, and I initially became interested in fashion design and went to Rhode Island School of Design to study that. But over the years it's evolved, but I've been very blessed to stay in the arts and have always been interested in being creative. Um, and so over the course of the years, I've had opportunities to do different things from working in a museum. I worked at the Metropolitan Museum of Art as an educator. Um, I also worked in the film industry, starting off as a costume designer and I fell in love with it um, and then uh, realized I had a bigger story to tell and that our stories weren't being told right. as black women. Um, and so I realized that when I make my films, they're really about us sisters. Sure. And um, 
That also evolved into uh, I had an opportunity to go to Columbia and study film studies. And so now I'm in a PhD program um, focusing on film. Um, and my thesis will be on African-American women in early cinema. SARS, Amy and Drew, just as your mother passed the legacy of Alpha Kappa Alpha on to you in terms of membership, you, you now have daughters. And I know you look forward to doing the same with them. Talk a little bit about that. Well, my daughter is four now, so the idea of thinking of her in college is <laughs> a lot to take. But um, I, I want to be a role model to her, as my mother was a role model to me, and to continue to expose her to women who are inspirational, uh, at, such as the women of Alpha Kappa Alpha, and to let her know the importance of sorority, the right. idea of sorority. Um, but to allow her to also express herself and to express herself not just as an, as an individual, but as a young, uh, soon-to-be black woman. Right. Thank you. Sorry, Drew. So I actually make a point of going to Martha's Vineyard every single year um, at the same, the same week every summer when I know a lot of my sores from the Xi Beta chapter are going to be there. And I do that because, one, I obviously love to see my sores, but also because I want my kids and my daughter in particular to build relationships with their kids and to get to know these women who are really more to me than just friends and former classmates. I want her to sort of see how deep the bond of the sorority sisterhood is so that she can hopefully on her own draw the conclusion that this is something, a legacy, frankly, that she should continue. One of the themes for our series conversations is around the idea of empowering women, but more importantly, um, for women just to live fearlessly to pursue their dreams and passions. Can each of you speak just very briefly, starting with Sarah Sharon, around what does it mean for you to live fearlessly? Well, I think it's absolutely imperative to live fearlessly. Um, not always easy to accomplish because the world is full of uh, negatives full of conversations and narratives about why you ought not to be here. Uh, so I always, the most important, I, I was trained as a lawyer, the most important juror is yourself. If you can convince yourself that I'm supposed to do it, uh, then you've just got to tune everything else out. For me, you know, I always try to notice when I'm afraid and I try to figure out what it is that I am really afraid of. You know, often fear presents as anger um, or sort of defeatism. And so when I notice that, I try to stop and say, well, there's something in here. There's some monster under the bed. So let's turn the lights on. Let's stop. Let's turn the lights on and let's look around. Let's find it. Because I bet if you look at it squarely, it's actually not as scary as you right. think it is. And now it's gone. You diffuse it and you just move on. And so for me, that is my sort of methodology um, to be fearless. That's great, thank you. And Sarah Amy. Well, riffing on what my sister and mother said, um, I would say just always coming back to yourself and tuning into your own inner voice and being true to it and not letting what the world says to stop you or defeat you or hold you back. Um, letting go of that fear um, and just being honest and saying this is who I am and that's wonderful and embracing that and trying to listen to your voice to say okay if this is who I am what does that mean for my life what next steps do I need to take um, and and knowing that um, just because society says certain things can't be done doesn't mean it's true right because things always they're always first sure as my mother has shown um, Soros, thank you so much for spending time with us here on Conversations, but more importantly, thank you for representing the best of what it means to be an Alpha Kappa Alpha legacy family. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much.